so there you go guys that's how you draw a little house I don't, I'm not sure if it looks exactly it looks kind of similar Ooh. and welcome to another installment of how to draw and animate in Adobe Animate CC uh, I've opened up our flash Adobe Animate sorry I still call it flash from the old days and I'm gonna select a little brush I usually go for the size that's um, not the smallest but this time because I'm drawing a background I am gonna use the smallest so I can get the finest line work because I've got it set at 640 by 480 but I've also got this guide so I can um, then at a later stage put my games out uh, to mobile at a bit wider uh, landscape sort of um, view so let's go ahead and just draw ourselves a rough template this is how wide we're going to be doing it. It's mainly all the stuff in the middle of the um, these two lines are going to be showing. I'll uh, group this and I'll go inside the group. And um, I'm today I'm drawing this little. This is just a little rough sketch of a house on a cliff. Uh, so we'll try and draw something like that close to that. It's not important if it's exactly like that. It's just a rough idea. Properties, let's pick a color somewhere greenish and let's start uh, doing the little grass. As I said, I usually like using the big brushes, but uh, this is going to be a background, so I'm not that worried about the line work being uh, bold and uh, smooth uh, as such because it's you just want to make it look like there's quite a bit of detail. Let's fill that. Yeah, and this is only because I'm using uh, the 640 by 480 resolution. That is a resolution I started using back in the days of Flash. When Adobe Flash was a big deal back in uh, 2010 or so. Most of you probably won't even remember that was a thing. If you um, grew up on um, mobiles, but if you are still on the internet today, then you know that uh, Flash is coming to an end in 2020, and all the Flash games are no longer that are currently available are no longer going to be available. So that's kind of sad, but I guess that's what happens, and we have to live with it. I'm just putting a little highlight on the grass a bit. This is just our little... I'm just setting up the grass. I want to put a house on this afterwards, and that's I'm going to group and start it in a new little object so this is grouped and let's group this again so we can draw the cliff and now if we will draw a cliff here as you can see we can draw behind it and it will just fall behind so that's really convenient so we can to fill it we just um, pick a color fill that let's do the underlining shadow under the grass And let's do the side highlight. I think uh, Adobe Animate is a great tool to use, especially for uh, vector graphics, which the benefit of vector graphics, if you don't know, um, is that you can actually resize them to any size and they will not lose their quality. Um, so that is brilliant. Um, it allows you to create. What I usually do is um, my backgrounds. I make them into bitmaps, JPEGs, but I leave the characters as vector. Yeah, I haven't closed that off somewhere. Just closing it off. I leave the characters as vector, and that that way. Um, if it gets resized to a bigger size, the backgrounds look 
kind of a little blurry I guess but the characters don't lose any detail whatsoever okay this is just a rough uh, quick way of doing some highlights on the cliff and obviously because I can't see where I closed it off correctly I'm doing <laughs> this <laughs> let's pick the what I did there was pick the fill option and I then I chose in here uh, the gap size of close small gaps I usually have it on don't close gaps but uh, here I had it on close small gaps okay so we've got a bit of grass and some um, like on a cliff and let's I went outside it as you can see and I'm on the main um, timeline and now I'll press command G again and I'll start roughly drawing the shape of the house I guess um, what do I want to how big it was, sorry I moved my little window here I moved it back and um, I'm gonna start drawing that little house I'm just trying to think of where it's gonna sit roughly so let's say there this doesn't have to be perfect we can always change it a little bit I'm just looking at my little sketch in front of me okay that's the general shape of the house and okay we got that let's fill it in a little bit um i don't know oh yeah we've got the line color and we have to pick this brush color so let's pick another color for the outline anyway and then fill it there it doesn't matter because the top of the roof i'm going to cover with another color anyway so we've got that there I'm going to select the lines and smooth them out a little bit. Now, uh, you might notice I'm not trying to make this perfect, uh, the angles or anything like that. You can actually play around if you've got it in a separate group. Um, as you can see, this I can move, our, move it around anywhere if I want to place it differently, in different places, I mean, sorry. And you can also skew it and stretch it if you want to, like that, if you think you may have drawn it wrong. You know, it makes it kind of look cool, it's kind of sticking out on one side it's got that cartoony look but um, yeah that's if you think that you drew it a slightly off angle and you want to change it so let's draw the roof I pressed command G again and um, I'm gonna draw a rough roof like this like this I think I forgot to leave it cut out in the middle but it doesn't matter we'll chop it out later this is the good thing about um, using this program you really can kind of make it up as you go edit little bits move bits around that's why I like using it because you really don't have to know exactly what you're doing you can kind of as I mentioned make it up as you go and it's really easy to alter the images, alter the backgrounds, move things around slightly if you need to. And making them another important bit is grouping all your little bits, separate bits, like the roof, keep that separate from your actual house because now that means I can grab the roof and move it if I need it to. Or I can put some detail underneath if I need it to. So what we've got is, we've got a little house there. Let's, I'm going to still adjust the, the body of the house and, and group that. Move it back. And uh, I want to make these little, I'm not sure what you call them. I guess these wooden bits that hold the roof up, make them stick out. And it might look like I'm, uh, I'm drawing over, but see, I can shift this around, move it. To the back if I need to later so that is yet again the advantage of grouping another advantage I'll show you a little bit what you can play around with when you work with this is I'll change my line so you can actually see it um, uh, yeah this is another thing I wanted to mention 
you could actually draw your stuff with this uh, line work from Flash, uh, from Animate. I, I can't get used to calling it uh, Animate. It used to be called Flash for like 10 years, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, so this line work um, is pretty nice, as you can see, but it has no tapering as such. You could use uh, other... I, I prefer using the brushes, that's my whole point. This you can play around with the thick and thick, uh, thickness. Uh, you can have it thicker on the outside if you want to. But me personally, I just like using these little brushes that make it look like you're drawing with a, almost like a pencil or something. Yeah. So let's carry on with our little blocks of wood that we're sticking on here. You can resize if you want. See, this is the great thing. Let's say that we make a few of them. I just wanted to show you something. And I'll just put a little highlight on here. Okay, so that, that's what it looks like. We'll straighten it out a bit. And let's grab it, copy it, and now see you can, what you can do is you can actually make it easier for yourself, but not by not having to redraw all of these. You can skew them if you need to a little bit because the angle changes. But as you can see, we drew one, and we can actually copy it four times, which makes it a lot quicker than having to redraw every one of those little... whatever you call them, I guess. If, if someone knows what you call these, please comment below, because... Uh, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I call them thingy things that hold the roof up. Okay. Okay, let's do the little rough tiles on the... might not be perfect and I like to keep things kind of slightly skewed you can see that it's not completely perfect but it's just it roughly looks like it's on angle I just you know what you can do proper almost architectural drawings if you wish but um, there's no fun in that it's just I, I reckon these slightly warped buildings end up looking way nicer and have more character I just uh, I don't know I'm I'm not into complete perfection I guess the whole point of drawing is to have a beautiful sort of curvy warped shapes I know that the artist that did machinarium actually decided to use his uh, left hand um, so that uh, the drawings wouldn't come out perfect because he was so good and then by the end of it, um, by the end of the production, he actually ended up being good, so good with his left hand that um, the drawings still looked different to the original ones that he started with, I think. I don't want to speak out of place, and I'm not uh, completely sure I, I heard the story, I think, somewhere in one of the videos I was watching about uh, Machinarium, which is a very cool point and click. Uh, from uh, Amanita Design, I, I think it's called. and. Uh, Yes, they do very cool point and clicks. They're also uh, Czech. They're based in Czech Republic. I am Czech myself, but I'm actually living in New Zealand, so and have been. I still speak Czech, but um, no longer live there. I only visit. Uh, so we're doing the highlights. Okay, so we did that. Uh, what, what's next? Okay, so we've got the little wooden bits. Uh, I think I'm going to shift these along a little bit because they look like a little out of place. That looks better. Uh, now we want to, let's say we want to do the under under the body of the house. We It's sitting on the grass a bit funny, so there's two options. We could draw grass bits over this or I can try and um, sort of do a black shadow in the shape of grass. So let's do that that way. Well, this is sort of what we'll do. It's almost like a grassy shadow and then we'll take the highlight and we'll just do the edges. We'll have to change this slightly as we go on anyway because we're going to be adding some stairs to the front of the house. Okay, but you can roughly see that that looks now like the house is not perfectly sitting there on a straight surface. It almost looks like, yeah, it looks better than it looked five seconds ago. 
Still doesn't look perfect, but uh, that's why we keep going. Okay, save your work. Uh, I use command S and constantly please save your work because um, I noticed that in the latest version of Adobe Animate, um, I'm not sure if I'm using the latest version, but uh, one of the latest later versions, uh, if you didn't save your work and you were, let's say, working for 15 minutes, it would crash pretty much every single time, specifically when you didn't save your work. So I had a few times when I did like maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes work and then everything crashed and I had to redo it all again. And that annoys a person. <laughs> I mean, usually, you know, it's supposed to be relaxing to sit and work and draw and if if your work gets taken away from you by your own stupidity, <laughs> which it is, sorry, but it is, it was my own stupidity that I didn't actually save, then, um, yeah. Okay, I'll group these together, and I just want to maybe put a shadow underneath this little roof bit. Um, just trying to see where I'm actually placing it. Oh, okay, I won't group it. So the shadow is going to go here and around roughly about there, I think. So uh, there. Uh, okay, let's stick these two bits together so I can fill this with a different darker shadow. It doesn't look that great. I'll move it around. Yeah, I think it's too dark. So it is. Let's go there. Okay, so we've got that. Let's say we want a front door. Um, I'm not sure if we need stairs. Originally on my little drawing, I actually changed it a little bit. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, what do we want? We want a little door right here. So let's press Command G again. Pick our color. Um, we want to draw the door here because we're going to have some steps going up to it. So that's our little door. And that's the inside of the house. Um, what are we doing? We're just moving out this. And then we're pressing Command G. And we're drawing the steps. So roughly around one, two, three, let's do four little steps. OK. I'm just doing the line work for the steps now, and then we'll do the fill, fill it with a color as soon as I finish the line work. Okay. Uh, so let's make it light from the top because this light is shining from the top. Let's make it dark from the front. We should pick something similar to this, but let's make it even darker just so it stands out. And let's pick the same side color from that side. And also, we didn't do finish this bit off. OK, so we've got the little steps going up to the house. And we want to do the same thing that we did last time with this little grassy shadow underneath it bit. So it's consistent. So they're not just floating above the grass as they were five seconds ago. Okay, I'll start it again. I completely went off. Yeah, I used to try and make everything look almost perfect. And I noticed that um, the little imperfections are what make the scenery, the little backgrounds that you do actually a little bit more interesting. Um, not quite sure how to describe it in another way. I just um, perfection seems a bit boring. It's, it's nicer when you've just got these little slightly off angles. See, I've got a little highlight on the edge there. I'm going to put a little highlight on this as well. Pick the color. I've been not. Uh, I don't know if it's not sure if it's my um, computer or if it's the program itself. I've noticed in this latest. Uh, I keep saying latest, but there's another version of Animate that I couldn't use because I couldn't export it. had some bugs in it, so you have to be careful when you download the latest version. I think um, I couldn't 
I can't remember what the issue was, but um, I couldn't use it, so I had to revert to the older version. It it looked good and everything, but um, they always change a little bit, so it's a bit frustrating when you get used to one version and then they change things up on you. I don't know what I was talking about, so it doesn't matter. Um, I completely forgot what my point was. <laughs> I'm focusing on making these straight lines. Okay, let's a little highlight on this edge. And on that edge. Highlight on here as well. But yeah, the imperfections that I was saying before, it just makes it look nicer. Uh, to me anyway. If you you could always use hypothetically, let's say you wanted to draw a house in another way, not not with the sort of loose way that I do it. Um, then you could just grab this these lines uh, here. And let's say you wanted to do a 3D house, you know, let's, you can just use an actual sort of a architectural view of how it should look. And that this, this is, this is going to give you perfect angles, but to me that just, I'm going to get the vanishing points, get rid of those. Whoops. But let's say, you know, that to me, it looks a bit too straight and boring. So anyway, let's get back to our house, not the another another house that I started drawing for no reason. Just to make my point, which um not sure if it is actually is even a valid point, but okay. I'll just ramble on anyway. I actually love um the artwork. I grew up uh, in Czech Republic so I uh Grew up on uh, Stirlistek, which is a little comic that's very popular in Czech Republic by a man named uh, Jaroslav Nemeček. And he's got a very loose art style, which I very much like. All his buildings are slightly warped as well, and he does it very quickly. I think he used to do more watercolors, now he does this. Uh, I love the old watercolor versions, they were beautiful. Okay, so we've got our little house on a cliff, but we haven't got any windows, and we haven't got that little tower that I mentioned. I had a little, sort of almost like a little towery bit at the top of the roof. So let's see if we can add it on somewhere. Now, let's grab the color of the outline. First, Command G, and how do we do this? Okay, let's say it would start somewhere here. Let's see, it would go up here, and... And then we go down here. I'm just, I completely forgot about this bit and I'm just trying to edit on last minute so I don't uh, make something that looks completely different than what I showed you guys right from the start. Because um, I think I should try and keep it as slightly on point. <laughs> I'm not saying it has to look exactly the same, but it would be nice to if it resembled what I drew at the beginning. This is going to be the thing, and this is going to be the top of the little roof. Okay. Uh, I think it was supposed to be like this shape. So that's that. That's that. Uh, okay. Just trying to make sense of how that would fit onto the roof. Let's get rid of this line work. Yeah, if I planned ahead and I actually was referring to my drawing and I, I wasn't rambling on about nonsense, maybe I could have actually paid attention to the fact that I missed the tower completely and put it in at the beginning. But since I didn't do that, then um, I'm going to edit now. Okay, let's focus. Focus for five minutes. <laughs> Okay, I'm just getting a little gap, so I'm trying to fill that in. Okay, let's just... Uh, it's just frustrating me when you're trying to pull it down and it just does whatever it wants with its line work. That's okay, this is my fault. Oh yeah, this was supposed to be rounded down the bottom, wasn't it? It's supposed to be like that. Oh, 
Okay, this is not a perfect example of uh, showing you guys, but uh, hey, I guess it shows you guys that even I make really bad mistakes. So there you go. You don't feel bad if you spend a little longer on your drawings. Not that I'm a professional or anything. I still think I, I see the sort of art that mo most people can do on um, online, and it's just amazing. I mean, I realize that. Um, my skills are incredibly limited, but I hope that for some of you maybe that are starting out or wanting to even just play around with this sort of stuff, then I might inspire you to do and try it for yourself because you might say to yourself, look, that guy can do it, and obviously I can. <laughs> What am I? Doing? Oh yeah, I, I made this. Okay, let's do a little roof. Okay, that's gonna be the bottom of it. I'm gonna fix it. I realized that um, this might not be as, as exciting all the time. So if you feel like you need to ever just skip through the video up to the bits that apply to you, or just skim skim through it, um, then. Please feel free to do so. Not that you feel obligated to watch the whole thing, but just in case you know you see something that's useful for you, pick whatever useful is useful for you and uh, use that. And uh, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe if you can. If you'd like to see something different, um, let me know. I'm happy to change it up and see what you guys want to see. I make the two stages that are free a week right now for monkeyhappy.com and um, I'm having to draw backgrounds for that every week uh, obviously all the art is drawn fresh for each one of the stages the only things I may reuse is some of the assets like maybe the sky and that sort of thing but most of the time I just I even that's that's what I enjoy. I just like drawing and creating, so that's why I know that um, some other game designers they might use uh, old assets from the ones that they've already created just to make it easier for themselves. Maybe even reuse characters and stuff like that. And I, that's nothing wrong with it at all. If that's what you want to do, um, that's you know, if that's what you enjoy. I prefer myself, I just like redrawing everything almost just so it's brand new and I know sometimes it I could probably save a lot of time if I was using the same objects that I maybe drew in the last 20 stages or something. I think I'm gonna try and do like a little black uh, drop shadow under here but it might not look good so let's just give it a go just so it creates a feeling of weight and then I'm gonna spend another five minutes wiping out this little bit here. Okay, so like that, uh, it looks okay. Now let's do a little window for the tower bit. And the inside of the wall window. And this color here, and let's do the little highlight. Highlight on the edges. I could maybe I'm gonna lighten these highlights because I think that they're not that visible. I think I might go for the completely white color later on. As you can see, if you make it white, it just stands out like it makes it look like it's almost shining, which I like this little effect that you can do. And I stuffed it up. What did I do here? Okay, let's get rid of that. And I don't think we need that highlight on the right hand side. Okay, so we've got a little tower. We managed to stick that on last minute. I'm not sure if it's, it's sitting correctly completely, but hey, it's it looks half decent. Let's um, 
do a couple of windows. We've got some windows here drawn on a sketch. So let's do uh, so these weird little key windows uh, in a little book that I was just looking through and I thought they were kind of cool looking. So let's do those like like this. And this is supposed to be this is completely of angle, but let's fix that. And yet again, pick our colors from here, do our little highlights. This makes it look nice. Grab our little window, copy it and paste it and skew it. This is why I love working with Adobe Animate, uh, just it makes it so much easier. Um, you could redraw the video again, but what's the point if you can actually just copy it and skew it and uh, paste it in the same spot. So we've got our little house and we're drawing whatever we're doing. Um, well, one thing is it's a bit high up because we're, the tip of it is touching. So let's drag it down a little. And we've, okay, so we wanted some trees in the background, I think. That's what I wanted. And I'll also wanted to put a little white highlight. I, I get frustrated when these things stick out like this. It's just my own personal OCD, but uh, you might not feel the same. It's just when I see it, I just get uh, like, it irritates me, so I need to change it. <laughs> Do a little highlight on the roof. I usually go Command-G because the reason I put all of these in separate uh, group objects is just the simple fact that um, you test it out and if it doesn't look good, you can always get rid of it, you know, or you can change the color of it. You can then select easily, just grab this whole thing and change the highlight to a more subtle, not a, maybe a full-blown white color. And that just makes it easier if you want to alter it once you've done it, once you've... Uh, because if you didn't do that, it would cut a, basically cut a spot in the stuff you've already drawn. Okay, so we've got the grass, we've got, uh, let's do the background cliffs just roughly. This is another cool option. What you can do is you can draw little cliffs. Let's say in the background, uh, I'm just gonna roughly draw these. And if you say, say you draw like a couple uh, I'm going to use a light color because it's going to be in the almost like looking like foggy, I guess. And a darker color from that side. Okay, darken that, lighten that. And uh, once again, we want our little highlight. And let's uh, draw sort of edges like that, just line work, and then highlight it. And let's do this edge highlight. Okay, so let's say we've got a rough little clip drawn. I wanted to just show you guys roughly how to do this. I'll just move it slightly. Um, we can move it to the back, and we can now convert it to a symbol call it like cliff or whatever, move it to the back again. And then here we go down to filters. We can actually add a filter and go and blur it. So that makes it look like it's just sitting in the background now, which is very cool to do, okay? So let's do that. But first I just wanna add some little sort of greenery on it so it doesn't look so gray. So put a little green top on each of the cliffs. That. Maybe do a black shadow so it makes it stand out a little bit more. Okay, I've noticed this is another thing. Yeah, I have to wait up a little while because I'm so quick, I uh, go and color it in. And it uh, doesn't really want to select my color because I'm too quick. And I'm before I, I start to filling it, and uh, okay, I didn't go inside it. I start filling it and it reverts to the old color that I've chosen, which is a bit frustrating if you're too quick. So watch out for that if you're doing that. Um, so this is the cliff. This obviously, we can move this anywhere we want. Let's say we move this cliff here. 
and let's say then we're going to copy it and paste it and then put another sort of cliff there we can make a different one but this is just to show you guys that you can actually use see you can use it in a slightly different spacing move it around a bit or flip it if you made like hypothetically three of these uh, you could move them around and it's make them a bit smaller a bit bigger or maybe apply like um I think it's brightness to it and see you can lighten it if you want to it's really cool what you can do it makes it look like it's sitting in the background but first what we're gonna do is do a big uh, rectangle not in this color let's choose a different color let's use the linear gradient type oh no let's use the radial one and we'll pick um, a yellow say there and a red on that side and now unlock this and we can actually have a sort of a okay let's do it more from here on out that's sort of a color that doesn't look completely perfect but um, we're gonna change it up let's add a third color and make it white that looks better that looks way better okay and now also what we want to do is let's say we want to put in uh, like a few clouds that are a similar color sort of a reddish and uh, use uh, I think I'll try and see if I can play around with this a little bit do a sort of a light yellow color not a light yellow uh, sort of like the clouds are getting lit from the underneath so there's one cloud there let's say you want to do like several of these and then once again as I said before you can I'll call, convert this one to clouds and I'll go inside it and I'll use the same colors to do a couple more so there's another cloud and let's say you want a cloud there okay and I think that's enough let's stop putting in clouds I'll change the color a little bit to something that's more appropriate Oops. okay this one is not filled properly let's close it up I'm um, not sure if that looks completely great but oh well we'll see there's a level more orange oh well I'm kind of colorblind so if this looks funny to you please ignore it okay move this in the background uh, first we have to get it out of the group that we put it into and move it in the background behind all the stuff even behind all the cliffs and once again we can blur this and maybe blur it uh, more than the cliffs as you can see like that sort of thing so you got some clouds in the background Oop, I'll just sit up. Oh, sorry, I just blocked off my face here, but I don't think you guys really care, but just in case you want to see what my expressions are. <laughs> um, then we're going to do a little footpath. So I'll press Command-G, I pick the outside color of the sort of grass and lead that up to here. And from there, we'll lead it back down to here. And then let's pick our... Actually, let's close it off so we can fill it in with some kind of a path color. Let's do a black sort of undershadow. Color that in. And also, let's do like these lines of dirt going up roughly up to our stairs this might be a little bit uh, I went for too much of a bend I wanted to sort of go out here a bit but because most of um, the content is going to be between these two lines I want to make sure that the path is actually visible like what you're seeing is the whole thing which um, on a mo mobile tablet or on a phone would be visible but uh, on uh, the computer where I, my resolution is only three four sorry 640 by 480 on that it's only this middle bit that's visible I'll show you later when I export it what I mean 
Okay, let's put a under sort of shadow under here. We can also add some flowers to make it look pretty. And we'll do those soon. And once again, we can make some little flowers, or let's say little leaves on the grass. And then we can copy and paste those, which is cool. Makes it easy, let's say, make like some leaves like that. Uh, let's do that again. Like leaves like that, and let's say put one like that, or slightly different shape so they look different. Let's say you've got like that. And I'm going to fill them with some kind of a color. I'm going to smooth out the lines. And now I'm going to just put some dark shadow under it. Not sure if I want to use black, but I might use like a dark color of the green. Just might be a bit too obvious if it's not obvious. Uh, just too much contrast, I think. So let's, I, I grouped each one of these. And let's say I just want to copy all these over. I can flip them to just make them look slightly different. Then I can paste them all around here so, so it adds, adds more detail to the little grass bits. And obviously, as they go into the distance, you can also make them smaller. You know, I'm just doing this very quickly just to show you guys what I mean. I'll move these to the different spots. Just create creates a bit more detail in the scene. I mean, I might not have that many of them in there. They look a bit funny. But, okay, let's just keep those for now just to... It's, there's uh, some grass growing out of a window. That's good. Let's move it down. Okay, so we've got a couple of cliffs. I don't actually like the cliff sitting behind the house. I just don't think it has such a strong contrast. Let's make them, let's move them down here somewhere. That looks better. Um, I think I wanted some trees. I want the original, so I think I had some trees. Let's put a little tree down there. So we'll go inside a group of this little grass bit. And save our work again. Don't forget that. Very important. And make a little, almost like a pine tree, or a pine tree if you want to. Start cascading down. Okay, and then the trunk of the tree. I'm not sure if you want it crooked or if you want it straight, but uh, I went with crooked, so let's see if that looks decent. So the trunk of the tree and let's different color at the top. Let's do the underside uh, shadow. Uh, color it in. And then I grab it and I use the smoothing just, just to make the line work a little, a little nicer. Because if you use something like Adobe Illustrator, your line work would look a lot smoother to start off with. But uh, here, the little trick is to just grab the whole thing and just you know, smooth it out a couple of times. It just makes the line work look a lot cleaner. But yeah, regarding the clean art, uh, even line work, just being super clean, like uh, that tapers off beautifully. I noticed that like when you get actual hand-drawn art, and you zoom up to it, you know, none of it looks perfect. And I think there's some beauty in that. I mean, yeah, when I was younger, I was always trying to go for perfect. And I think that lines that are even like this, you know, the highlight being slightly kind of thick and thin and distorted and all sorts of stuff, it just, let's say like I even make it more thick and thin like that, you know, it just, the line looks a lot cooler than if it was a beautifully tapered, smooth line, I mean, yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe I've just uh, picked this particular look. Let's move this up a little bit and do the same thing that we did last time with the little edge. Uh, like that. Okay, so we've got a little tree. That's sitting there. What else do we need? We've got the little grass bits. It, uh, I think there's way too many. I'm going to remove some of them. Okay, it's just I went overboard. I, went, I was got excited that I can copy and paste. I want to do the darker side of the tree on that side, and I want to lighten it on this side. Like that. And like that. Okay, so we've got that, we've got a tree sitting there, we've got the sky, I'm going to save, 
And I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure if I want like some hills or something. Something about this just doesn't look like it's complete. Maybe it's just the sky that looks a bit bland to me. I think more dramatic look. I think I'd prefer if there was, it went into a dark red or something. It just looks a bit bleh. Uh, not white, sorry, I wanted to go with a dark red here. Why is that not white? What did I do? I broke it. This is supposed to be white, yeah. This is supposed to be like that. And I got rid of the white. Why am I getting... Okay. Move these along, however you wish. Play around with it. Now, the cool thing with these little cliffs as well, if you want them in there like that, I just stuck them on because I pasted them, but you can put a little tint of red maybe on them, just so they fit more into the background. Or maybe we can only have like a one in the back. Not completely sure, or maybe you can get rid of them completely. I think, actually for this scenario, I, I showed you the whole point of the cliffs, but I don't think that they suit the background that well. I think what would be cooler if he had a, like a dark black sort of tree line at the bottom. So I'm going to attempt to do that. So let's say I want like a solid color, let's pick that. I press Command G again and we're going for like these sort of trees that are, you can only see the tree tops here. I'm not sure if this is going to look good, but um, I wasn't liking the cliff standing in the... I, I had it on my original sketch, but uh, didn't like it very much. I didn't think they suited the background. And there was not enough contrast in the illustration. So let's move this down. Um, hypothetically, like, because, you know, we don't really have to draw the trees behind the house. So let's carry on here. Ooh, close this off and continue drawing our little trees there. And this might not look completely wonderful to start off with, but I just want to play around with um, putting something different than the cliffs we had. I just think something that um, just looks a lot more dramatic like this. I mean, yeah, it looks way better. I'll just convert it to trees, say, and move it to the back. And now, once again, because it's in the background, you want to blur it a little bit. Yeah, that looks way better than the, than putting the cliffs there. Or maybe it's just me. If you guys think differently, please let me know and I'll put the cliffs back in there. <laughs> okay, let's change the lines of the clouds just so they're darker, so you can see them when they sit on the sky. Maybe we can do even a, like a white highlight. Not sure if that's gonna look any good, but um, it might add to the whole idea that there's sun coming. It's like a sunset. Okay, so we got that. We've got the few skies and we've got some trees. Actually, it doesn't look half bad. Yeah, it it um it looks kind of good now. Let's oop increase that. The tree looks a bit funny sitting there. To be honest with you, I'm just wondering what it looks like without it. I'll, I'll put the tree back in since we drew it. Okay, so we've got a tree sitting here. Let's move it behind the house. Yep. Um, and another little effect just to show you. Okay, let, let's call this back zero one. Okay. Don't know why it's pointing out to that side. I think I overdid it. Okay, that. Uh, and I'll just test it to show you guys what this looks like. I just want to move this a little bit. And as, as I was saying to you before, you can only see what's in the, um, on the 640 by 480. I can change that, but what I'm thinking is I'll put a more of a sort of shadow. This is a little effect that I started doing lately, which um, is kind of cool. You can put like an overlay of a shadow on the top and I'll press Command G again. And what I'll do is, let's say the light is coming from the left and I want a shadow going 
to the right almost I'm not sure if we can we can change this if it doesn't look good but um, I'll show you what I kind of have in mind let's say there's a shadow coming here along there this is this is whole dark um, I was thinking maybe down here and let's say it comes over there so let's say this whole area is just darker this whole area is darker and that's what we want to do um, let's say then we grab the linear gradient we pick uh, two blacks and we make this one light and make this one lighter and as you can see there's like a shadow I don't know where it should, if it just looks better if it looks dark here or if it looks better where it's dark there but um, so as you can see that was overlaid and now because of the rough or sorry the, the hard line of it it doesn't look that great so once again what we can do is convert it to say shadow and now we can uh, use a blur option I'm gonna have to get rid of my face again every time I pull down this little window I get rid of my face which I don't know if it matters if it matters to you please comment down below if you really want to see my face I thought it would be a important for you maybe if you want to read my lips <laughs> um, yeah it uh, I can start a shadow actually here it's all the way under here and uh, all the way under here maybe I don't know how that's gonna look maybe it looked better the way before but yeah so let's go like that and I'm gonna also do a something gonna this softer side okay, I'm gonna start hard there and go softer on the other side maybe even more and I'm sure you're thinking can you please just stop mucking around with it it looked way better when you did it first and now you're just ruining the whole thing <laughs> but you know what it does is it shows you how did I do this shit? I'll just paste it in there sorry because I didn't have it in my background it shows you how like this little light coming from behind the house looks kind of cool um, it's just something that you know if you don't think that there's enough contrast in the whole illustration or the drawing it just makes it look slightly cooler I'm still playing around with this I'm still not happy completely but I think I'll just leave it for now just because you get the point it's just uh and let's say we now want to uh, just so you can see the whole thing if I export it to a full screen what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little mask over the top because the only things that you will really see is whatever whatever's in these two boundaries between these two lines. So I'm gonna go insert I'll let another layer. This is my little house. So I'm gonna name it house. And here in the front I'm gonna call this mask. And then on the mask I'm just gonna do the choose a color, do a rectangle just so we get rid of all the ugly edges. It's like if you were doing a painting and you wanted to tape it off and then mask. See, like that. And now I'm just gonna export this. And I think I've made my point. I'm not gonna muck around with it anymore. It's enough like this. And you guys can roughly see how a background is drawn. And also like a little thing that I wanted to show you is um, at this stage, uh, this obviously I need to fix this up. The shadow is coming outside of the house a little bit, but uh, I think you get the rough idea. I would normally, when before exporting, take this image and first I'll fix the shadow just so I don't leave it with any overlaying shadow coming out of the house like that. Maybe that's too much, but oh well. I'm just trying to be quick so I don't bore you guys to death. Um, and I would actually convert this to a bitmap. And what that does is um, it just makes the whole thing look a little smoother and nicer. So there you go, guys. That's how you draw a little house. I don't, I'm not sure if it looks exactly... It looks kind of similar to 
what my sketch was. There's a cliff, there's a house. Uh, we got rid of the cliffs behind it. We drew, instead, of, instead, we drew some treetops, which I personally think look better than the cliffs that I had originally. And um, yeah, if you guys like this, then please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe if this interests you. If it was incredibly boring, please tell me so in, down below. <laughs> and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.